Well, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining me from today. It is Monday, October 2nd, here where I live, and it is time for another episode of The Bunker. So welcome in, everybody. Good to see a lot of you already here in the chat. I see a couple of people have showed up early. I appreciate that. We got some people showing up now, and that's awesome. Um, I expect maybe we'll have a few more people showing up today, or maybe some people that have took a, a couple of episodes off will be here live today. I'm anticipating with, <laughs> with this topic, right? This is, I kind of posted it out there that this is like one of the almost, uh, forbidden topics to talk about out there. So yeah, we're going to be talking about safety, CRT safety, and I'm going to give you all the rundown on that here in a second. But first, thank you all for joining me again live here on YouTube. And this is The Bunker. And please, if you don't mind, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button for me uh, right on your browser or whatever form of medium you are watching this on if you are able to please do so uh it does help the channel and this show get more people coming in because where i live this is like hmm, when i was in college we would always laugh and watch like the maury povich show uh the maury povich show during this time block right this almost noon or like what's his name oh why well, can't i remember jerry springer so it's like this, eh, hard to get, hard to get a lot of people on time zone here in the middle of the day in the United States. But if you're out there and you could drop a like, it definitely helps. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody again for being here. So we've got Ray Cerrone showed up today. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Temple of Seshat or Seshat <laughs> or Seshat. I'm sorry. I'm terrible with the name sometime. Good morning. Good morning. I mean... Aminio, uh, Amin and Nemo, <laughs> Alexander, Seb, Pasadillo, Pasadillo, Giants, Mega Cards, thank you all for showing up. Snuffer Stuffer, welcome in. Welcome back. Thank you all. So, again, today we're talking about CRT safety, and uh, we're going to let things go for a minute. That's generally the procedure here. And so if you're showing up and watching this after we are live... Uh, feel free to check out a pinned comment below. It will tell you a timestamp, a timestamp in uh, the bottom of here, where you can just jump ahead past like the warm up period because it just does generally, oh, excuse me, generally takes 15 minutes for people to show up, at least the majority of the crowd. Oh, so welcome in. Wonderful Monday. Wonderful Monday. We got more people coming in. Thank you all so much. And yes, uh, when I will be open, here's the thing. When we get into the safety discussion, it's going to be like this. We're, I figure it's been enough time that uh, I need to probably make an updated uh, a safety video. And it's not going to be this stream is not a representation of that entire topic. Because um, there's a couple things I want to accomplish today. First off, I want to go back and review the tape. And uh, we've done that here before. We want to review the tape and see the past episode that I have on safety, which I'm looking at. And it says, goodness gracious, it's four, over four years old. Uh, October 24th of 2018. So we're coming up on the five-year anniversary, which is just hilarious. So we'll get to see mid-30s. Young, spry Steve in the old shop in Tennessee. Uh, we'll get to see some footage. We'll see what mistakes I made and uh, where I got things wrong. And Because uh, I'm sure I did. I mean, this was five years ago, folks. And between now and then, I've probably serviced a good five years. I bet I've serviced a good 800 to almost 1,000 CRTs, right? My CRT body count is enormous at this point Good morning Travis and clash and Robert Leppy Kevin Shane thank you and uh, hey good call I, I know I think it was you stuffer stuffer did you you caught that 
First off, thank you anybody who watched the new video that came out last Friday. I know a lot of people probably did because it got one of ten uh, over the weekend for me, so that's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I think it was you, Snuffer Stuffer, who caught the uh, creepy, uh, <laughs> creepy transition I put in there <laughs> in that in that first transition uh, of that video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, it happens happens early. 30 seconds or so in, so anyway. Uh, yeah, hang on guys, I will be opening up the questions a little bit once we get into that topic. So just hold tight, because I don't want your topic, you may have a great question, I don't want it to get buried in uh, in our, you know, get going discussion, okay? So let's, uh, let's get in here and as things get going, oh, let's see what's been going on. So I had that video come out with the two, uh, Sony's the two eight inches kind of a comparison quick video I think it was really enjoyed by a lot of people so maybe I'll go through and do a couple more I have another set that I can hopefully do another that style video uh, but of course look this uh, we're still working on promoting the Music City Multicon which if you want more information on it I just I would consider just googling Music City Multicon it's in the Nashville, Tennessee area. It's at the end of this month, right before Halloween. It's that weekend, uh, Friday to Sunday. I will be there. I will have, um, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do more and more and more. We went through this, uh, my presentation in one of the episodes here on the channel, a live show, and I was talking about things I wanted to change. And so there's going to be some things. Obviously, I've been thinking on like that, but I'm also bringing some CRTs. I have a lot of extra consumer CRTs that are in great shape that I just have no use for. I've got a few of them, and I'm going to be done with them, and I'm going to take them to the show to sell them. And it's going to be reasonably priced. I mean, it's not going to be like $10, but they're going to be decent, good working CRTs. So you're probably looking at like 75 bucks for something. I'm going to open it up, clean it out, and I may even offer something. Whoa. Cole, what's up? Sorry, Cole is getting all feisty back here. Come here. What's up, buddy? He's just over there barking at something. Like, well, I've, I've been moving some, like I said, I moved some CRTs out to uh, make a little room for, come here. Yeah, you're a good boy. To make a little room for things. I got all these extra CRTs. So I'm going to be taking some of them to that Music City Multicon to hopefully offload them to people who need some, like 13 inches, and I'm going to have one 20 inch that I'll bring. That'd be pretty nice. That one will have like component and everything because I got an extra that I just don't need anymore. So again, if you're going to be at the Music City Multicon, I would love to see you there. I'll have a booth there. I'll be working on CRTs. I've got a plan. Uh, you can come by and see me work on some crazy CRT stuff live in a booth. I'm going to put up like some caution tape so nobody gets too close, but other than that, I'll be there. And I hope to see a lot of you there. So Cole gets kind of upset when you move things out of place and it could be just something like a basket or a ball or something. If it's in a place he doesn't think it should be in, he'll get mad and bark at it and, and just like think like it's an evil, evil something. So I also have, uh, on the safety topic, I have equipment here. I want to talk to you guys some more uh, about it. You know, of course, we have this guy, which is our lovely discharge tool and um, other very minor tooling. I have a CRT right here that's popped open. It doesn't have any power into it, but it will make for a good demonstration on the desktop here where I should be able to pull this camera over and, uh, you know, we'll be able to look at some things there uh, when, we are, when we're ready to do that and just take a look at kill old Cole. He finally calmed down and got in his bed over there, so that's a good sign. He may be snoring, everybody, but you know the, you know the drill. We'll let him snore. I'm sorry if that happens, so we'll, we'll just keep an ear out for him. There is a filter on the camera but again thank you everybody for showing up and um, been just a little bit of stalling <laughs> really i did get to go to a college football game again over the weekend had an incredible time my team won uh i made a fool of myself probably and uh had a good weekend so um that was all good 
And now, so let's just go. Let me see. Let me see if there's anything else to really mention. Uh, I will tell you a little bit of a story about the video uh, that that we just that I just came out with again. Uh, I will tell you a little bit behind the scenes. This this those two CRTs had to be shipped. Okay, we got a good sized crowd here. There's two or C, there's two CRTs had to be shipped all the way across the country. And I had to put them in the same box. And I'm in Virginia. And I had to ship them to Tacoma, Washington. All the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. And I uh, was talking with the client. And we decided to go for the air. Hey, Amos. Thanks for coming today. Good Maki. Uh, Shane. Thank you, guys. Anyway. I did this shipping procedure. And of course, I packed these two things wonderfully. But I packed them in the same box. And it was a pretty good size box. It's like the same size box you'd pack a good 13 inch in, but instead I packed two, those two smaller ones, I packed them really well, packed them in a box, and then put them inside another box, suspended in bubble wrap, and then sent them air. And it, again, it was a good size box. It weighed 40 pounds, 39 and a half actually on the scale. And man, whew, oh my goodness. It was $576 just to airship it two-day air from here to there. With, I put on it, I think, $1,400 in coverage for insurance. But <laughs> that's how much it costs. That doesn't include the packing fees. <laughs> Took two days to get there. And if you go and you watch that video, I do show how there's a speaker inside of the KV8AD12. I opened it up in that video, and I even show you where the speaker is because I go in and show there's a potentiometer back there. There's a connection point where that speaker just plugs into the circuit board. Well, in that air, even in the air travel, it... Some, somehow the package bounced hard enough where that speaker uh, tension was on that wire because there's a lot of tension on it. I mean, it didn't have very much place to give. So the bounce was enough to dislodge it, believe it or not, from the board. And there was no audio. So I had to guide Tony. He was awesome. I had to guide him uh, kind of through old reference videos as well as oh, through DMs on opening the setup and looking in, and thankfully, yes, enough, it was just the speaker had become unplugged because he was testing the set, and everything was working good. It just didn't have um, the speaker plugged in, so there was no audio. So thankfully, he plugged it back in. It worked fine. He was able to get it back together, and everything worked perfectly. And when it came to the other set, which both these, again, I said, went to the same spot, it was the 8044Q. You know, you get it in, and it, those just are tricky when you use the buttons. So just take your time using the buttons on setting up that CRT uh, for its inputs because it's got a lot of different button combinations you can push. And if you don't have the right ones, it'll look like the screen's messed up and it just needs to have the right combination press so you have the correct input, correct settings, everything like that. So yeah, it's it was still fearful. I packaged it so well, but it doesn't really matter. You're always scared. Oh, goodness. All right. All right. Thank you, Sashin. I see your comment. Excellent. Congratulations on fixing things. All right. So that happened. And that was fun over the weekend. And that's just a follow up to that video. Uh, but hey, let's start talking about let's start talking about safety. Right. OK, so uh, this is the time when I'm going to go through some things. And then there will be a section here in a minute where I'm going to open it up for questions and comments. Because as I said, I want to make an updated video. It's been long enough uh, to do a simple chat and make it about safety. So we're going to look back at the old footage. But um, not only that, I wanted to open this up as a discussion so that we could talk about it together. Because there are going to be things that I'm going to forget to mention in that video because I'm a person who works by myself. It's going to be something extremely um, 
like basic and then i'll just get you know i'll just get hated on for a simple mistake that i shouldn't have made so that way i can um kind of work through that with you and we can talk about it and hopefully i won't forget anything okay so let's uh let's begin let's first off man i'm gonna just Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to just talk to you now. We're in our main topic, okay? So this is it, right? This is going to be the timestamp moment. My clock on the counter says 16 minutes and 49 seconds. So this is the point. We're jumping into our main subject, safety, and our full topic here. We're going to start off by, of course, me plugging one more time because we have new people in here. Please hit the like button if you can. Every time you hit the like button, it results in eight to ten new views of this show. And that's really helpful. And I always appreciate that. Everybody who does hit the like button, you do it a lot on this show. And I love it. I thank you. And that's really, it's really helpful right now as this is a new live show. Anyway, let's start off by talking about a couple of tools. Okay. And really the most infamous tool is going to be this, this lovely device right here. It's a discharge tool. And this is a homemade discharge tool. I made a video on how I made this thing. Goodness gracious, so long ago. I can't even remember that either. That's the same time period. So what I'm going to do is we're going to hopefully jump over here. Maybe I can get a closer view of this thing for you. And... A good look at what what I've got here because this is nothing like what's it called? No, there's nothing. There's not a lot of not a lot going on to this tool, right? It's pretty simple. You can go a little bit deeper, and there's professional versions of this that you can buy for a lot of money, right? <laughs> well, of course, Bob. Why do you think it's got so much oil on it? probably broken into a few uh i've probably had to hot wire my mercury grand marquee a few times with this tool okay so this is one of uh one of our safety weapons probably our most important safety weapon and you need to be you need to be comfortable with this thing you need to be confident with this thing and it does look terrible right but there's there's really a reason for all this there's really oh yeah allegedly you're right you're right, folks. This is not. This is nothing about um, not being. Actually, thank you, Bob, for showing up. I can finally remember to put you on as a moderator here from my phone. And uh, woo, I don't want to hear myself. Oh yeah. <laughs> Excellent. There you go. So let's let me do one thing really quickly here, and. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, folks. So, as I'm saying here, we've got our discharge tool, okay? It's pretty simple. It's a standard what what is this? We'll even look at you can look at this a husky version. It's an old old um Flathead screwdriver, pretty thick, thick-headed, right? See there? Let's see, I don't know how good that. Back up there a little bit, like right there. Okay, pretty thick-headed, right? I mean, you want me to pull out the calipers and show you? I, I like to use a thick one. Okay. Right? That sounds good. I used to, I like the ones with them them thick thick shafts. <laughs> this is this is just so childish, I feel like sometimes. So this is I would turn that on, but it's busted. It's not been working right. You know. Was that about ten? Whoops. Ten millimeters. Ten millimeters wide. <laughs> and uh oh heavy duty goodness gracious there we go live show folks yeah the thickest point there and again pretty thick 
thick and thick and end here and just just like that now i don't what i don't want on here is a very sharp edge okay i want this to be dull and blunt and i don't because i don't want to go in there and and we're gonna i'm gonna show you that here in a second but like for example if i'm over here and i'm using this i don't want this to be now this is a bad one because it's actually got i'll show you it's got this stupid um cap with much people get upset i'll shock myself on the safety episode anyway it's got a cap here that i'm that uh, i'm gonna have to try to remove here live for you we'll do that i'll show you this um you know th and this is actually not even recommended for sony sony doesn't want you to discharge it the way we're gonna do it but anyway you don't want something too sharp of an edge so when you when you get under that cap and you're actually discharging it, you don't want to be like scratching into the glass right there, or you don't want to accidentally slash this rubber anode cap and make a hole in it where you would expose that voltage. What's up, Retro Tech or Die? So there's no, um, again, we'll get this off in a second, but there's no reason to use something super sharp and also it doesn't need to be like super long i mean it can be longer than this if you want but it doesn't need to be like example this long okay <laughs> okay usually you could use it like this long but then you need to be concerned with shielding all this because you're going to take this and make this a big live uh voltage probe for the most part so you're going to have voltage going along the metal here so i don't like to make it hugely large when i'm using it i also want to use something that has obviously no conduct no conductivity chance there's no voltage going to pass through this handle at all there's absolutely zero chance of that right it's in a it's in an acrylic plastic molded handle that has no chance of transmitting uh, are transferring any type of electricity okay so that's the first thing too that we need is we need to have the dull tip it needs to be pretty heavy duty and thick and then uh or these are just the tips i would tell you the tips on this tool and then that nice a nice handle like this you could use wooden handle ones just as long as it doesn't like see how that insert in there is the metal from the edge here the only thing I will warn you about is if you have another one where that metal comes out in any way, if there's a ring on here that has the metal and it's, it's, you know, it's part of your screwdriver, that's bad. Or if that, sometimes I'll have screwdrivers where that metal will go all the way back to the back here. And then there's an exposed piece of metal back here. And that would be just as bad. You know, you're going to be really being risk risky there. So the structure is that you start with a cheap, decent screwdriver. And then what I have here is just an old piece of scrap wire from a busted extension cable. And the reason I use that is because it's it's well shielded, first off. It's high, high gauge wire. We'll clip a piece off here and, and then look at it a little bit closer. So if we, you know, see here, you know, you're looking at, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12 gauge wire here. I don't know, maybe, mm, well, maybe not quite that. Maybe, maybe in that 12 to 14 category is better, but it's well shielded. It's a piece of scrap wire, nice copper in there. And since it was an extension cable, it had three things, you know, a positive, a neutral, and a ground. And these don't do anything. But it also has an extra layer of shielding out here. That's why I like it, is I have this extra layer of shielding. And if we look in here, that has an exposed, uh, or that wire goes up to that point, and then it wraps around. It's not soldered on there. It's just stripped down about two inches, and then it's wrapped around this and um then that cable goes down here and then that cable comes out there where it's got tons of electrical tape and then again this is just scrap wire that's left over and that goes down here to the other end which this is not hugely long again you don't need something that's like four foot long i think this one is about three feet which is about as much as you need you know 
And on the other end, I actually did solder in a, a crypt. I cl clipped it in. I soldered it in. It's a nice little alligator roach clip, whatever you want to call that thing. And that makes for a great clip to clip onto something like that. And then there you go. So I'm going to show you a quick test for your tool. Let's say you got it together and you're like, yeah, I feel pretty good about this thing, right? This tool's pretty, pretty good. I feel pretty, pretty, you know, as Larry David would say, pretty good, pretty, pretty good. This is braided wire. I don't, I don't use solid core because the solid core would be too stiff, too stiff. All right. Solid core would be very hard to bend like you want it to be able to roll up like this see how i can roll that up and maintain a good high quality cable but let's say you got it all built together and you want to be safe right so safety so we want to make sure we we have this thing tested and we're not gonna we're not gonna expose ourselves to any danger so all you need it doesn't have to be this big fancy thing okay it doesn't have to be a big fancy meter like this one i'm not trying to hold oh, oh, my fluke flex right I'm not fluke flexing on you sorry i just love this meter okay give me a break just kidding i'm joking all right i'm in continuity mode and i'm gonna stop confusing you and me and i'm gonna flip this camera around okay give me one second I think one more is the good one. Excellent. There we go. There we go, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, we have... We'll fix it up a little bit better here, so... All right. I've got just... You know, this is in continuity mode. It's ohms mode, right? Ohms, yeah. Okay. So all we're doing... Is we want to make sure that... Basically, what's going to happen in here is that our voltage... When it goes from one point, it's going to go to there, right? Right? So that's good. That's a nice, consistent spot where we, that's all we want to do is if there is any voltage in that anode cap, it's going to hit that and we want it, it's going to quickly go to this edge and it's going to just discharge out into the, uh, wonderful atmosphere okay i'm just kidding it's going to discharge it's going to discharge through the ground on the tv uh but we can also do something like this like i can maintain this clip here which we know is again live to this end so that's a demonstration if we had for example if we have to for an example this uh right here like this would be live, right? Voltage, if it was if it was actually voltage coming in. We want to check and see. See, so like I'm I'm testing the edge here where my tape is. I want to make sure I don't hear anything. Like even over here. See? I want to make sure that oh, see. There's a possibility for me to you know catch that voltage coming out of any of this. It's gotta be just, you know, this is again. A way to make sure that there's no voltage coming anywhere. If you had a piece of metal here, you'd probably do it where you would have that. Okay? See? So this way you know you're safe. You're like, okay, well voltage it comes in here, it's going to hit that if it happens. If it happens, it'll go there, it'll go to that point, and, and I'm completely safe touching this end. Okay? It's always great to stay below this point right here, no matter what, but even like this exposed end, it's not like that's got any connection point to this, right? Okay, see? None of that voltage is like coming to that or anything. Usually I have that clipped off. I just had that, I have that clipped off, pinched off, because it's not even being used. Well, I've good, I've, all right, so you guys do know uh, that I have seen one time a really bad CRT discharge that I could show on on the on the stream really well. Arcade monitors do it a lot. Hey Tony, I was talking about you earlier. Thank you for showing up. 
Um, so, I'm sorry, I, I lost track of what I was saying there. But anyway, we're not we're not worried about this point here. It's again just this black cable that's going to this clip, and I have that pushed up over there. And you just maintain a good safe distance. You wouldn't go any near this with that plug and going in right there. The Toshiba, yes, I'm sorry. That's what I was mentioning. Thank you for the reminder, Sashin. The Toshiba video I did a couple months back on the channel, it had a great example of, uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it had a great example of a discharge where I would, every time I would discharge the thing, it would make a huge scary zap. And you could almost, the interesting thing was, show you kind of now this will probably get a little bit dizzy right let's see uh we're probably i'm probably gonna have to without making you guys too sick here let me go back to this i'm gonna fix that camera um if i can here whoops sorry about that so let's uh get back here go back here and we will configure the video again. And I'll invert myself back to normal. Okay. Now, when you have a CRT like this, Sony's pretty much always have a built-in bleeder resistor. And most high-end stuff will. But you can never really take that for granted, especially like guys. This is uh, gals. This is like high level. St <laughs> you know, I, obviously, I'm at a point where I have done this so many times. I'm comfortable. I know which ones to work around like this. But most of you are not going to have that level of an experience. So I don't want you to go in here and take anything for granted. Hey, Robert, thank you very much for the super chat. Says, I love your channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, again, you can go see that video, that Toshiba video, and it will show you one of the worst zaps you'll ever see uh, on the on the CRT. Just zap every single time on the end of this. It, where if you were touching that, it would go into your body. It would definitely make your day unpleasant. Definitely make your day unpleasant. So this, I'm going to be honest with you, this thing right here, which I don't know how bad that, let's get that, just the light off there. We'll leave that up there. This right here is pretty much the biggest tool, like, that you have to worry about when you're working on a CRT, just to be safe. You need, um, you need to have that consideration for safety uh, and you need to use this to make sure things are safe so let's talk about uh, maybe well, well how about this let's jump over now let's roll some footage we talked a little bit more in depth about this tool we're gonna see what I have to say we're gonna see what a much younger much more spry Steve has to say about all of this. And I have two videos. I don't think we're going to, I don't think I can handle watching both of them of myself, to be honest. <laughs> oh, but pardon me, folks. So let's go back. Let's go back in time. Back to a time when I was much younger, much more spry. Much, 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 much different. We had a different dog in the house. Yes, I don't know if Brutus is in this video. But we're going to roll through this bean footage here. And we're going to see... We're going to see what... Uh, what this younger Steve from RetroTech has to say. Again, this is five years ago. I'm gonna pause our jazz, obviously. I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn my mic down a little bit. I'm gonna turn desktop Steve up. And let's watch this awkward entrance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like this is this is gonna be great. Let's let's do a reaction. Alright, hang on, hang on. I know. I'm not 
Let's try now. I'm Steve, and today we're looking at CRTs again. Today we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. CRT safety, specifically on a CRT that is a consumer grade television. So lastly, I want to see if this is a good television to possibly RGB mod. It only has RF and composite inputs right now, so it would be a great candidate if it's possible to add RGB to this, so then it's not so uh, useless pretty much in today's world. Okay, so let's take a closer look behind the CRT before we open it up. This is just a brief look at the behind the... All right, this poor, this poor awkward Steve. Ma'am, this is hard. <laughs> this Steve, this Steve was lacking a lot of camera, camera charisma. I will admit. <laughs> oh, goodness TV. gracious. Let's see what Here's he said. Let's see what he has to say. Specific one, TXD1972. Manufactured in January of 1997 and Samsung and like I say the inputs down here on the back Are very standard um, actually it's only got a one of the composite video uh, Connectors looks like it's been ripped out of it and then we just have the RF and then there's composite and mono audio in the front So let's go ahead and remove the shell now and take a look in the back All right, so before we go too much further Let's just talk about something that we need to make sure we've done. First off, make sure you've unplugged the television. And uh, this thing was turned on yesterday, so it's been full 24 hours since it's been turned on. I, I just recommend waiting about a day. All right. This is hilarious, right? Okay. Let's already debunk this old, this old youngster. <laughs> Goodness. Let's just debunk this youngster for a second. First off, it doesn't really matter most of the time to wait. If you do this right, even if there's a, even if there is energy in there, you do it correctly, you discharge it correctly, you can do it 20 seconds after you unplug the machine. Okay? Now, I would recommend waiting a couple of minutes just because you do hear a lot of that voltage kind of sporadically separate out the tube when you turn something off. And, of course, you want to let all those circuits, if they do have a discharge circuit, to go. But you don't need to wait a full a full day. I know. I, hey, guys, I loved... I, I'm having fun. I'm not, like... I, will, I thought this was going to be fun. I haven't watched this video probably since I made it. So... Hey, Belmont. Thanks for showing up today. Um, hey, Brian, Armin, Ronnie, cousin, Hubert. Thank you all for showing up today. Ronnie, I think I got you. Yeah. Chris. Oh, I know, right? Felipe. <laughs> all right. Let's continue. Let's continue to move on down the road. And, and I'm also going to give you an update to this television. We actually did a stream. I did a stream with Bob. What? Last week. On this TV, this is the red one. For the first uh, time you open This is the your red CRT, one that was RGB modded. You know, if you've never opened it before, it's always good to just unplug it and let it sit for a full day. Okay, I've removed the back of the TV. Now this is, again, the very first time I've opened this television. And you can see right away, this is just filthy. It's covered in all kinds of dust and just sediment from probably 20 years hey, of sitting hey, and Brandon never Arnold. being opened. I hope you can Thanks see on coming. the camera, but there's just inches of dust and buildup on here. So this is a really good example of what I wanted to show on the back of a CRT. And the reason behind opening this, even if you're not doing anything else, it's good to come in here and inspect. I mean, there's so much dust on this board down here that if you were to use this for a long time, you would probably heat up these components. This dust would uh, probably cause something to either fail. Um, it could burn up and stink a lot. So this is a perfect example of why you'd want to get in here in the first place to clean out the CRT. But before we do that, we want to make sure we go through the safety precautions and we do the right things to make sure we're safe okay so as you can see like i said just tons of filthy dirt and dust i really want to clean that off 
And uh, so before I go ahead and do that, I want to make sure this is just completely safe. And to do that, I need to discharge the CRT. Now, uh, some people, you know, say you don't really need to do this, but let's just go ahead and do it to be safe on this. Let's just assume this is the very first time we've ever gotten inside a CRT. So let's go ahead and discharge this. And uh, before we do that, though, let's talk about a little bit of personal protective equipment. There is some personal protective equipment. All right, so here's the thing. I remember this. Let me get here. We're going to get a little personal here, okay? First off, thank you, everybody, for showing up. Look. If you're here, I'm sure there's people here that are new for the first time. Welcome in. Thank you very much for showing up. I really appreciate it. This is The Bunker. It's a live show. It's every Monday. It's at this time slot, and it's about every Thursday. Sometimes I have to take a Thursday off, and when that happens, I have a replacement show that, that fills this spot that I shoot with a friend of mine named Zez called The Cathode Ray Podcast. So, uh, But anyway, welcome in. Thank you so much for coming. Please, if you don't mind, if you just got in, do me a favor and hit that like button. That does help the show grow. And I'm sorry if you've heard me say that already a few times. and You've already done it. I appreciate it. But I do have to mention that every once in a while. And again, we're talking about safety today. We're looking at this old video. And yeah, these are the gloves, right? The infamous gloves, okay? I'm about to show you the gloves on this video. But the reason is really weird. You know, this is a time when I didn't... Uh, I didn't know a lot about CRTs, not nearly as much as I do know now, right? I didn't know. I, w I wish I no. I wish I knew then what I do know now. Exact opposite of the Toby Keith song. Uh, I wish I knew then what I did know now. Okay, and that's that. These aren't really necessary, and. Well, I was really just more concerned with how bad people would uh, judge me, I think, if I came out and said you could just do this without gloves. Now, these gloves are okay. They'll give you a little bit of confidence, but they're awkward. Look at them. You cannot precisely touch anything. They're like some kind of just messy glove. Just some kind of glove that you can't awkwardly, precisely touch anything, right? What am I supposed to do with precision with these big sausage glove fingers, okay? And these are gloves are expensive, right? Get them from Granger. Let's see. Let's see what this says. Uh, we're going to look at this in a second. But these are Marigold Industrial Grade 10 score. But they only do max volt, 500 AC voltage protection. So you're pretty, you're pretty much fine for doing like this. Like your hand, oh, my hand, like if this is on and you're like, oh, my hand just fell against it, right? And I'm not trying to dig, like, that's really what your protection is. This is, has such high voltage, if it was running, it really wouldn't, this isn't going to be enough protection. If it were to hit this high voltage running. Sorry, just losing it there for a second with this freaking prop glove. Anyway, uh, the glove is awkward, right? Because if you're in here, you're like, oh, I need to do this, need to do this, need to do this. This is all lower voltage stuff. But there are areas of high voltage in here, right? Anyway, I wanted to go off a little bit about that because, again, we've already, the good thing, what, what's the good thing Steve, or young Steve here said so far? Right, we need to be unplugged, we need to have the discharge tool, and that's the best things that he said so far. He said some stupid stuff, but we do need to, <laughs> we do need to be unplugged. Do you need to be unplugged? But if we're unplugged, right, there's not live voltage going in there. So it's just stored vo voltage in that tube. Now, this is important. The larger the tube, the larger the voltage. So if you are working on a large tube, Steve's advice about waiting a day isn't actually that bad. But you don't have to do it because there's plenty of large arcade tubes that are like 30 inches, right? And you can... Hey, I need to pull that board. It's just been not working. I just tested it. You could pop it off and it will probably zap. Okay. You could use this, but you don't have to. 
Okay, so we're going to look at what she says more about these gloves and kind of giggle. Um, kind of giggle at ourselves. So we'll see what youngster Steve here has to say. Continue on. That's your lesson on personal protective equipment, young Steve. Equipments you can use while working with electronics. First example would be gloves. And these are some highly rated uh, industrial strength electrical gloves. Uh, rubber insulated gloves. I'll show them off here. These did come from Granger and they were about $70, but they're available through any, um, they're available through any store that may sell safety equipment online. So Amazon, eBay, all places like that will have something like this. But these are specially made and they're not hugely thick, but they do feel weird. They're a specific type of rubber and they are rated up to a certain voltage. And so this is a good set right here. Again, these were about 70 US dollars for these gloves after all the uh, discounts I got for ordering them. So what you can do is actually wear these gloves and then it's recommended to even go further than that. And these were just about a $20 pair of uh, nice leather gloves. And I, you can actually put these on the outside of the red rubber gloves. And then you have double protection for your hands uh, when you're sticking it inside a CRT. <laughs> if, if you just need the extra, um, you know, if, if this helps you get over any kind of fear and makes you feel some more secure, then please don't, uh, you know, please go for it. It's not, it's not that bad if you're going <laughs> Oh my goodness, yeah, young Steve. Young Steve, this is so comfortable. Hilarious, I have them still here. Look at them. They're nice and dirty. Look at this. This is double bag it, baby. This is like this is like better than like 90s Trojan ads, right? Double. You gotta double it up, guys. You go into spring break this year, you gotta you go into Club La Vila. Oh, you must be prekking. You must be packing. Double stack it. All right. It's like I said, man, my CRT body count now has got to be over a thousand. <laughs> oh, man. People get like, oh, if you don't like goofy, stupid, I don't know, jokes like this, you're in the wrong place, I guess. Right. So. <laughs> oh, look at this. You keep going, you young man. Over your fears. Um, then I say, you know, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Another thing to think about is the kind of clothing you're wearing while you're working on this stuff. If you want to be um, protected additionally, it's good to wear some, you know, tight sleeves. Now, I'm not saying this cotton material is perfect. It would be nice to have something that was maybe a little thicker in canvas. So something that's tight on your arm under that glove. And at least something that will uh, protect your skin from direct contact on something that can help out too. Always too, when you have your hand inside a TV if, or any other electronics that has power going into it, only work with one arm or hand at a time. Uh, keep the other hand in your pocket. It's called the one hand pocket rule. So just use your work hand and keep your other hand in your pocket while you're doing the work. And that way you're never going to ground something through your chest area. Uh, which can really cause damage to your heart. All right, good good job there, young man. You got through it. Oh, goodness. Yeah, sorry, guys. I, I did get a little bit funny there for a second. Belmont, thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah. Let's hope I don't embarrass myself too bad. <laughs> oh, goodness, this is so fun. Anyway, uh, the one-handed rule is a great piece of advice when you're working on discharging a CRT. It always is good to have one hand free from the frame. So if you're sitting here like, let's let's say, let's say Stevie Retro's in here and he's like, oh, hey, 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 I'm about to discharge this. Where should I hook this up? Um, let's plug it to the chassis here, right? And then let's go in here and let's discharge it. All right, I'm ready. I, I've been uh, I've been training. I've been watching myself. I'm ready to discharge it. And I come in here and I discharge it, right? And I'm like, ah! Let's make sure. Let's see if I'm right. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy, but would, 
Would we have shocked ourselves by doing it like that? Right? Oh my goodness. Look at that. We could have been so careless. We could have just like zapped ourselves by holding it like that, right? So you want to have that one hand out of the way so you don't actually do that. And it's actually really great. <laughs> so talk about the shocker. <laughs> I haven't thought about that since since bad days in college. All right, so one hand in the pocket, that's really a great piece of advice, right? We want to have one in the pocket. Some of these things are definitely going to stay in the next video for safety. And that's one of them. What else? Um, well, the reason, too, is if I did what I just did on this example, and think about how that path of voltage would go. It would go... Well... It would go through there, it would hit here, go through here, and it might try to jump through this, but it wouldn't jump through that. But it, it's going to just go throughout your body and everything, and you don't want to take that like to your heart. Now, another thing is if you hit two points and you do like this and you close a circuit, that's even worse. Right? That's when it passes through your heart and hits the ground, something like this, and you're like, BAM! And it's like... Whoosh! don't want to do that at all that's a really bad thing so anyway that's a fun little demonstration on how you could accidentally zap yourself just by your form on uh discharge also think about that if this is a live set with metal chassis this has a metal chassis frame and it's on a ground loop and if you have a metal base table, well, you could ground through the table then. You have even more. Um, if I wanted to get extra frisky and protected, I could, for example, take my uh, ground wrist strap here that this, like my ground wrist strap actually goes all the way to like the house's ground cable, like a big rod. So it just literally goes into the earth from this directly. So I could, you know, I don't know. I could, if I really wanted to, I could connect. I don't even see one really handy. I usually have these things within arm's reach. Um, but I could pretty much run a jumper cable from this point to this point, And that way, it would go off into the ground. Okay? Hey, Grail. Thank you for showing up. So, that way... I could that, just get that on out of here, or you could leave it on the frame, but you want to make sure you don't have the frame attached to something else that's metal. You know, you could then transmit it. Hey, that's the, hey, this is a number, this is, thank you for bringing this up, Belmont. You don't have, you can have fun. You can just watch this show, laugh at me. We can laugh at old Steve. You don't have to do any of this stuff. I'm not telling you to do any of this stuff. I'm just trying to show you a little bit of what I do when I do this stuff. Because if you do not have confidence or skills or much technique, you shouldn't really try this. If you don't want, I mean, there's always going to be a risk when you're messing with electrical stuff. Thankfully, you could take a lot of the risk out by unplugging it, but even in that case, there's so much risk because there's electricity stored in some tubes uh, beyond... Some of them are going to stay charged for a long time. That Toshiba would stay charged for a long time, okay? So if you're not comfortable at all, that's perfectly fine, and don't, uh, you know, know your limitations. Take time. There's no, there's no, like, there's no race here. There's no race to a finish line most of the time. Take your time. Uh, if you want to learn about this stuff, don't have to do it right away. I'm, I'm, and this is like, it's just first hand, a little bit sneak peek. I would love this to happen someday to have, you know, a, like a master class offering where someone could come in live or a classroom live where you would have to basically pay for like a three day course, right? Where we hang out. You bring a CRT with you that you want to work on. You bring a certain set of tools, and we're going to get you to a certain point from day one to day three. And it's like a whole workshop. Might even be like a week-long thing. 
I don't know. I mean, it would have to be, I'll be honest with you, it would have to be something that would be in price line with other kind of camps like that, that are specialty. I don't know what that exactly would cost, you know, but you would have to think about it being something that would be along those lines. And again, this is just, this is just brain farts coming out here on a live stream with everybody. Anyway, sorry for that jump off here, um, but I appreciate everybody coming in and and like kind of guiding this conversation as we go because there are some key things coming in there uh, but let's get back to some humor and see what see what we have to say from young man steve now we'll give you a background at this point i believe i was still using some kind of editor on my phone maybe or maybe I, that's i'm trying to figure out if i was filming with my old cell phone at this point or if i had moved on to my original film camera that wasn't a cell phone and that was a Nikon camera. <laughs> Grail, I would have, I, the Texas is a place if it wasn't so hot, it would be a great place for me to go. There's a lot of business there and I have a lot of good connections with, with people in the Houston area. Uh, so that would have been, there's always that if I really, gosh, man, anyway, Let's uh, let's move on. Back here behind the CRT, look at this uh, spring right here. This is part of our ground loop on the CRT, and this right here is our degauss coil cable. But this one is directly attached to the ground loop on the entire CRT television. So that's where I'm going to connect my end of my discharge cable. It's probably right in that loop connection area or over here um, on the cable. That way I have a good spot, just easy to connect to the ground of the whole TV. Now I've gotten my discharge tool and it's connected over here to the ground spot I told you about. And for today's demonstration, I am gonna wear the gloves. So what you're gonna to try to do now is just take the end of your discharge tool, uh, which will then send the electricity from anything that's built up in that tube over to the ground and you should uh you know just maybe sometimes you hear a pop maybe we'll be lucky and we'll hear a pop when we do this but not always so i don't even mind flipping that up so you can actually see the anode but i'm i'm, I'm physically touching it a couple times now that i've touched it i can let it sit for five minutes and I'll come back and repeat the process. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. I've come back here and I'm gonna go ahead and do this. All right, so just like I said earlier, this whole double discharge, it's not really necessary. What you could do instead is you could skip this double discharge, you could pop it out, and then there is a chance that the tube itself this happens sometimes, especially with larger tubes, okay? I'm not going to act like it doesn't, because it does. Sometimes this tube, you'll discharge it once, and then you let it sit for a couple of minutes, and a secondary amount of electricity that didn't fully discharge will build back up in that tube, and then you'll still have another little bit of charge left in here. It's not even as much as the original charge, and none of this is enough to really, you know, blow you off the your rocking chair, okay? It's like... Again, it's not running when you're doing all this, and this is a second discharge, but uh, the tube can build this up. So you can always remove this anode cap like I'm going to do on this TV in a second, and then you can let it sit and then come back and discharge the tube again. Or you can sit there and just keep discharging the tube for a couple minutes. You can sit there and tap, 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 tap as many times as you want. Come back, tap it again. Tap that. Tap that, baby. All right, let's see him. Let's see him do it. The same process of just slipping this under there and discharging that to make sure there's no current running in it. I don't hear anything. So it's good to go. Okay, so now that I've safely discharged this CRT, I'm going to go ahead and remove my CRT ground cable. And then we're going to go and use some brushes and get a lot of this dust off here. I've seen other videos where people have used uh, cleaners and sprayed it 
Uh, I'm not going to let, I don't have enough time to let this sit. It's really cold in my area, so I'm afraid that any water may uh, freeze or something if I let it get into any kind of electric, electrical component. So we're just going to use compressed air and uh, brushes to get a lot of this dirt out. I know also people get concerned about capacitors and maybe getting shocked. The only other uh, area that's of concern right now would be where the larger capacitors are down here, but they're on the bottom of the board. And uh, there. But guys, I know a lot of people like talk about this stuff, like capacitors being super dangerous. But most of the, I, I've never had, knock on wood, I guess, right? I've never had an actual personally. Again, I'm not. This part of the discussion is just me. I'm telling you the truth. I've been doing it again. High count of CRTs I've worked on. There is maybe a couple times twice where I've actually seen a, a capacitor on like a board similar to this board actually zap uh, when it's turned off and you're just working on something and it shorts out together, which would cause a zap. But again, I want you to think about it. It's not a zap that's going through your body. This is going to be a zap on a small capacitor point. And if we look at that, uh, let me get a used capacitor. It's gonna go. It's gonna go short, short distance between your finger. So most of the time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna burn your finger. Okay, could burn it. Could burn it up, like zap it. But it's not gonna actually. <laughs> it's not gonna actually like. It's not like a uh, capacitor that's in something very dangerous, such as. The higher end, big capacitors, you know, most of these small capacitors are really no, no problem. And it, when you're discharging like this, it's not really an issue. You don't need to worry about it. You could go in afterwards when you pull this board out and take a little screwdriver and discharge every capacitor. But I don't think that's going to be something. Really any actually, that's, taking... that's a topic I want to talk about. What about, what about that? What do you guys think? Should we leave that even in as a discussion? The capacitor part this out because you can't uh, you can't get shocked by the top of the capacitors so those aren't going to be really any hazard there's no large capacitors at all on this board uh, i don't even see maybe one capacitor on this entire board back here for the neck board on this tv so there's no real danger there just be mindful still of the anode cap area as occasionally uh, energy can still be built up in your crt tube and if you were to um, take that out and there might be a chance that you could get some electricity come off of there, but that's very rare and you're fine if you leave the anode cap left in. So um, there are special brushes you can use, but honestly I found that a good high quality paint brush that it doesn't have paint on it of course, but um, one that has nice bristles that are tough that are not going to uh, damage anything either, kind of soft also, does a really great job of just brushing a lot of that dust off the top. And that's what I really like to use because it gets in between things safely and it doesn't leave anything behind. So that's just a little tip. Uh, now you can use a... Yeah, let's talk about some things too. Like people, a lot of people will grill me online because again, but I'm trying to tell you this. This is not... this. Today's video is a discussion about safety. And uh, it, we're going back looking at this old video, kind of critiquing it. And again, we're talking openly about things. This is in no way like meant to be your complete guide to safety. This you shouldn't. We're openly discussing things where I have a ton of knowledge and things, and uh, mostly it's learning um, on the fly. And I don't want right. You can't really take too many precautions when it comes to safety. So again, when I made this video, that's why I had a lot of I had the double. Uh, gloves on. I said a lot of the things about leaving it longer. There are going to be times with other CRTs where it will zap every time. People are bringing up CRTs in the arcade systems. And yeah, those can be violently zappy. Okay? So that's not... Uh, there's going to be times like that where you need to know kind of what you're working on. So we're just openly discussing this so that... We can get, we can get things right in a better video. Yeah, and it, 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 any look, hey, absolutely anything can happen, right? Even 
let's say something even on this tube it could i've seen them like zap twice but it happens uh you could come in here and the integrity on these parts could be worn out you don't know it zap you right okay the most important thing is to be comfortable and know what you're doing and and be aware of the risks that there is risk there's always risk in this stuff this i think and i think that again I like talking about these things kind of like this, but again, this is not meant like, oh, you have to do it this way. This is the only way, right? There's different ways to do things. I'm just giving you through some knowledge firsthand of what I experience, what I do. And, and again, this is not plugged in. This particular one hasn't been turned on in probably five years. It's been parted out. It's been opened up. It's just a demo model. The darn cap is completely epoxied in completely epoxied in and again this has a discharge bleeder all these this is one of the more really really low end pvms it has like a third of the parts are just missing so the discussion is here i think the important information is to try and make sure you're just most comfortable with whatever you're working on and again either way I think it's an open-ended, interesting discussion, okay? And the last thing, look, the last thing I want to happen to anyone, I don't care the situation, I would hate to have anybody hurt themselves working on a CRT and saying I did something that would cause that. Now, I realize this is the internet, and this is just a show, and like the live show, and if uh, whatever you do is up to you, you know, you take, watch these videos and, and this is, uh, and then you move on from there. You can either use it as an entertainment, you can use it however you see fit. But again, it's not, there's no rules. There's no rule book here. It's like, I'm, or there's not officially any rule book. Uh, this is 8040. It just has S video composite. Only one input line. No, like, half the stuff on this board is just missing. Okay. Well, let's go back. I think Steve's finally going to get in here and discharge this tube. This has been... Sorry about that. This has been something. Elect electrical brush, so you don't short anything out when you get around uh, the boards and things. But most of the time, this will do fine on a CRT. Oh man, so take a quick look back here at this board with me. This is why you have to get in here and just inspect your CRT after you get it and make sure you clean it. Just look at this enormous amount of dust built up on these capacitors. And these are the important capacitors that will affect your geometry and everything, you know, if um, and all this excess buildup will just act as a uh, as a heat uh, insulator, sorry, a heat insulator. And it will wear these parts out because heat will build up quicker in them and they're already um, over 20 years old. So it's a really great idea to get in here and get as much of this stuff off as possible. Um, even the flyback over here. Let's, let's pan around and look at that too. Yeah, okay, just disgusting. All kinds of dirt and dust. So what am I, I don't know, I'm going to try to do some more cleaning on this thing. But um, if you notice, this flyback is just filthy so let's get it cleaned up and uh, see how the soot around these adjustments this does have focus adjustment and a brightness adjustment on the bottom and um, so that's important to note oh and even inside the shell is just absolutely filthy if you're looking up here around the front so this thing has um, years and years of soot and nastiness built up on the inside it, raised, it could use a full disassembly and extreme cleaning, so maybe we'll do that in a future video, but for now let's just get it cleaned up enough to continue talking about safety on it. Okay, so one more thing to look at here is this cable that's going from the flyback and it's part of the anode cap, and just look at how much dust is on that. Just be simple, easy, 
wipe down and actually it's just so black it's not coming off so this one's got some extra soot in it it's not so that's not actually that bad it looked really nasty but it's not actually on there the dust is it's pretty well off that cable so let's go ahead and start looking at some of these areas on here again this anode cap is a, a very dangerous spot on the CRT just be mindful of that okay and anything attached to that so you've got your anode cup you've got your cable and then you've got that going down to the flyback so let's just start with this cable it's good to inspect this cable make sure there's nothing wrong with it no splits nothing while it's discharged make sure the connections still good down here at the flyback and everything uh, because this cable you know it's doing it's going to be sending all the electricity into the back of the tube uh, the second area to watch out for on the back of all this is on the yoke assembly, which is this area right here. Uh, it's this white ring all the way up to this. Okay, so we're talking about the yoke assembly again. That's this area between this white portion and this little screw right here. And this is what you can adjust. Uh, you can undo this screw a little bit, and then you can adjust this left or right if you have a yoke problem where you may have a screen that's tilted or something that's what the problem is is this yoke is tilted somehow and you can just loosen that up and tilt it uh, unfortunately a lot of times you have to do that while the CRT is running so I do need to be mindful of these points right here this and this I'm actually glad I remembered to point this out I thought I didn't uh, these points right here now when you get inside and uh, like this is this is pretty much after servicing put cleaning it putting it back together right and you're going to start to or you want to make an adjustment so you have to use the with the voltage on so this is not something you should you know this is high level stuff because you can zap yourself on this this yoke uh, you see these points I'm I'm pointing at there's no there's a couple of them that have heat sink or heat shrink tubing on them maybe just that one there's voltage that comes through there, so if you were to put your hand and touch those points, you could ground out and definitely get, get yourself a zap off that yoke from this box. And there's like usually one on top, one on bottom. I'm glad I remembered to point that out. Point, and these three points right here on the back of this plastic. On CRTs like this, standard televisions, these are usually exposed and can be shock points. So do not tap into these points right here. Be just mindful of that because uh, there is current going there and if you ground it out there you could shock something so don't do that let's go down here and look at this area these are our convergence rings which on a standard television most of the time to adjust convergence you have to move these rings around hopefully that's not a problem on your TV because that's one of the hardest things to adjust I won't be doing that in this video and I don't recommend that unless you're highly skilled and have a lot of equipment so you can get it right Okay, so when you're working back here, sometimes you might have to come back to this flyback. And this is where the electricity is generated going to the tube, and it's, it's coming from this uh, flyback right here. So occasionally, now this one's still dirty, but occasionally you'll have to come in here and, and spin these potentiometers. And um, you see they're, they're threaded, so you can use a screwdriver in there. So if you use a screwdriver with a plastic handle, You'll be fine. You can turn those clockwise and counterclockwise, and it'll actually increase your screen brightness with this bottom one. And this top one will increase your focus. So if it's a blurry screen, this is how you fix that. All right, Brandon. The voltage is not nearly as high through that uh, that winding on that yoke as it is through the like the anode cap. Nothing's going to be really as high as that. There are points that you have to be careful of on a CRT, especially if it's running. Any board, you don't want to effectively touch together two points to bridge them. Two boards, you don't want to touch together to zap yourself. But a lot of that stuff is isolated in the way it's designed on these newer age CRTs, which would be like after 1985, usually. Uh, kind of the composite and beyond video era. Um, they're going to be isolated where the high voltage is like if you just look at this one for example and again this is going to vary between CRTs and we're just discussing this one as the example model 
you know, your high voltage is coming in through here. So the tubes, this spot that the only exposed points you have in the tube are here. And then you have the back here where the neck board is. So obviously anything on the neck board is also a point where you could get extremely high voltage sent into you and, and hurt yourself. The neck board, when it's turned on, is high voltage city. Okay. It's really can be dangerous to touch anything on a neck board. That's where it's going. It's it, the, the, the voltage is being sent in through there and high voltage through there. And that's, that's energizing the gun. Those are the two points, the anode and the cathode. Okay. Now there's other points that are going to have high voltage through them. There's going to be down here where the transistor transformer is the flyback transformer. And also the power supply. Here we're using a switching power supply that's over isolated on its own. Isolation. But it does have points where it's running where voltage comes in. You get plug in your voltage back here. There's going to be points where it's running over to this power supply. So there's always going to be chances of, you know, zapping something like that. But um, that's a good question. There's not... It's not the same amount of voltage going through it's not like thousands 31,000 I think it's like 31,000 volts goes into the tube at, at the highest points usually and that's not how much voltage is going through the the yoke that would be insane but good question let's continue finish up here with what Steve has to say hopefully okay so at the other end of the CRT we got most of our stuff that's pretty harmless now again I said this thing's broken so um, we may be able to just remove this whole piece and insert a SCART input right here. And then we could wire up RGB, but this right here is the RF tuner. And then back here we've got our chips that I'm sure is our, um, you know, some kind of processor for menus and everything. And then running the, and then we've also got the jungle chip. So we should be able to insert a um, RGB signal into that and that will come up in a uh, future video. And we'll also replace a lot of these bigger bad capacitors. And then we'll talk about how to be safe around those. Um, some other things to note on here, these areas with shielding uh, can get very hot. So be mindful of that. And there's no reason to come down here and touch down here where they could have a lot of electricity going through. But just be careful of that if you ever have to come back here and work on it while it's running. All right, so if you're brand new to CRTs again, just be mindful of the things that are dangerous inside one before you go poking around in it really. And if you have been working on it a while, then maybe this just refresh some of the areas on the CRT that um, are hazardous. Uh, just remember that the best reason to get in here would be basically to clean it off at least first initially if you just pick up a CRT and you don't even plan to mod it. It's always great to clean it off and that way um, you could prevent any kind of problems from maybe happening. Um, the next thing would be if you needed to make an adjustment on your screen brightness or your focus or your convergence now everything else would be done through the service menus so a lot of times you don't even need to open this up if you just need to fix something all right so that looks like that's pretty much the end of that video and i i still get kind of surprised sometimes how many views that has it's a ton of views on that video so let me uh let me get us back here to a normal spot how about that let me turn that back up And we'll get back here in our face view and uh, open it up. I'll open it up. Guys, if you want to send me any suggestions or questions here live, you're welcome to do so. But also, if you're watching this on a playback and it's not live, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section so that if there's something that you think needs to be covered better in, the, in an actual safety episode. Again, this is just an open discussion that's like, a bunch of people hanging out have a good old discussion about CRTs. This is not meant to be your safety guide. This video this is a discussion about safety. Open-ended. So do not go through here and start saying, Oh, look, Crazy Steve told everybody to not use safety equipment, to go in and use their bare hands and lick the anode cap and, you know smell it and make sure it was nice and hot before you 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 stuck your hand in there and zapped yourself good okay <laughs> oh yeah thank you no thank you everybody i really do thank you grail it's again it's an old video it's fun to, I, I'm, I'm giving myself a hard time because i like to and and it's it's safe to make fun of yourself 
quick question. I got a CRT from an older person that it's kind of what it smells to be an old person. <laughs> Like if you just have to go through it like I just showed you and try to clean your set, you can watch that video again. <laughs> uh, Amino, if you find a CRT and you don't know anything about it, is it okay to bring it in the home and push the power button? Sure, why not? I mean, try it out, but do it outside. Try to, you know, do it outside in the garage. If you're real concerned, you don't think it's safe, open it up. And just look. Don't start poking. Open the shell. Look it in there and say, "Oh, it looks. It looks like everything's plugged in." That's important. Yeah, CRT shock will not grant you any superpowers. Okay, not gonna happen. <laughs> Snuffer stuffer. So what happens sometimes with the yolk? The yolks can get stiff and most of that comes from maybe we'll maybe we'll be able to come in here and show you a little bit closer. Ooh, Cole is really snoring big time. It's gonna be more difficult, but what happens to show you here, kind of, but let me get you eh. let's see. You get a poker pointer. So if we get down in here, this area, and that's probably difficult to see. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Oh, that's better. To get down in this area, what happens is you loosen up this yoke. You loosen up your yoke ring over here, right? And it's still stiff. Really, that's two things going on. You've either got some kind of, like, the uh, uh, epoxy. Could be up here in spots, and it's actually securing the yoke to the tube and to the wedge and it's all secured together that happens a lot okay and then if you go down here uh go down in here and what happens too is this you see this piece of there's a piece of tape on this tube yeah the the dog is snoring like crazy right now anybody can hear it anyway there's a piece of tape around the tube what happens is, is this piece of plastic just m melts to that tape a little bit and it forms a bond. So what you generally have to do is loosen that up and then you start turning it slowly left or right, working it back and forth. And it'll eventually pop free from its point where it's stuck together and then you'll be able to move it. It'll be super loose. Okay. So people are asking about, let's see, what was that? I think your question is about if the power cable's missing. If I generally see one with the power cable missing, it usually means that some scrappers come and cut the power cable off just to steal the copper out of the cable and left the rest of the set behind. So that doesn't generally mean that it's bad. A lot of times. Whoa, uh, demo. Um, I'm not sure which points you're talking about. Sorry. Just manhandle it a little bit. Yes, that's the that's the that's the real way to fix that. Manhandle it. Give it a little bit. Squeeze. Turn it left and right. It does. They just get stuck. That's quite a common thing where it's just not been moved in so long. And that is a point right in here. You got a lot of voltage again going through this part and it gets really hot right here right in here so that kind of melts over time over 25 years happens okay so this is um you know this is a complex tighter version all right all right, everybody. So, I I have some other things I have to do today now. And I appreciate everybody who's been awesome in the chat today. I appreciate all of you for showing up and dropping the like. Again, my last plea for you. If you if you get a chance, please drop a like. If you want to come back for another episode, I'll be back here Thursday and we'll have a further discussion about this and something else brand new. We'll tell you if you are a patreon member i appreciate you being a patreon member and 
uh, I am working on a arcade monitor right now for a Patreon member. That's 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 the one we're on right now. So um, got a lot of lot of things I'm coming up with working. Um, I haven't done a video on that silver set yet. No, okay. But <laughs> thank you. Uh, if you guys want to do a like question and Q and A only style video coming up, let me know. Um, maybe I'll put a poll out soon on some kind of social media and, and we can do one of those coming up and I'll give you an email address. You can send some questions to ahead of time, or you can just come live and we'll do questions from the live chat too. Uh, because I wanted to keep this mostly about safety. I feel like we've run through the topic enough. Again, if you have anything that you would like to add about that, I appreciate you dropping that in the comments below. Thank you for joining me again for another wonderful episode of The Bunker. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And please do stay safe out there, okay? You can never take too much time just trying to study a thing. Uh, one last tip. Just go check and find a manual. Try to find the manual for whatever you're working on. It'll generally give you some good tips on how to safely do things inside there. But uh, today was just a fun chat about safety uh, for hopefully a future project. And again, I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.